In this training video, we're going to go over how to set up your Wi-Fi Ranger when you first get it. So this uh, would apply once you've installed the Wi-Fi Ranger, have it powered up for a couple minutes, and then uh, you need to look at your quick start sheet, which will have uh, the network name of your Wi-Fi Ranger, the default password, and the control panel address. Um, these are helpful um, for just that initial connection to the Wi-Fi Ranger and then making configuration changes on the control panel. So we're going to uh, find this network and um, on your computer, tablet, or smartphone just look at your list of Wi-Fi networks then connect to that network and enter the password shown on the quick start guide. And then once you are connected wirelessly, then we need to open up a web browser or, you know, it will automatically pop up on some computers. But if not, open up a web browser like Internet Explorer, Chrome, Firefox, or Safari. And then we are going to type in this address, the control panel address. And then hit enter or return and this will take you to the control panel. So on the control panel, on the main tab here that we're on, you see the list of all the Wi-Fi networks the Wi-Fi Ranger can see. And uh, it's sorted top to bottom from strongest to weakest signal. You can see the signal strength bars here. You can see the type of network it is. WPA or WEP means that it's secured. It requires a password um, in order to connect to it. So if I were to say try to connect to this network, it would ask me for the password. Um, open networks don't require a password. Filtered networks don't require a password, but they do have uh, a login page, you know, agree to the terms here, that kind of thing. So like McDonald's, um, all, all these different hotspots that are free typically are filtered networks. They don't require a password, but they do require you to go through some login steps. So typically you'll uh, scan for networks and then connect to one that you have access to, and then that would get you online. Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and change the broadcast name and password. So on the Wi-Fi tab, you can change the private wireless network. You can change the name of it or the SSID as it's known. Um, so we'll just change that. And then the password, whatever you want to use. Um, neither of these um, neither the name nor the password should have special characters like the ampersand, the dollar sign, percent sign. None of those should be put in. It should just be letters and numbers. Um, and of course punctuation like periods and stuff does work underscores. Um, so once you're done there, click Save Changes. And that is going to uh, disconnect our computer or device from the original wireless broadcast and it's going to uh, make that new wireless broadcast. So on your computer or device look at your list of networks and then find um, that new network name that you just created. And it can take probably 20 to 30 seconds for that to refresh. and enter your new password. Once that's done, um, you'll be able to use the control panel again. And I do recommend bookmarking this control panel address. Um, you can click make bookmark here. It tells you to hold control, press D, which will add that to your bookmark bar for a Mac it's command D for PC it's control D and you can add that to your bookmarks makes it easier to find in the future 
So other than that, um, on the setup tab, you might want to change um, the order of internet connectors. You've got Ethernet WAN, internal Wi-Fi WAN, and cellular in this case. Um, people with an elite pack or a mini pack or any combination of an indoor and outdoor Wi-Fi ranger would also have WFAR control active. So you can basically prioritize which internet type of connection you want first. So let's say I want the USB port of my Wi-Fi Ranger Go to be my primary source of internet, I would move that up. Typically though, you want internal Wi-Fi or WFAR control to be at the top so that the Wi-Fi Ranger is using Wi-Fi uh, before using cellular. That way it can conserve your data plan and all that. So, um, so you can change that around. And then failover might be an option you want to turn on. It's a feature which causes the Wi-Fi Ranger to attempt to automatically get back online if it ever goes offline. And it will do that within five minutes or whatever you select the interval to be. So you might want to turn failover on. Um, if you're more of an advanced user, you can turn hide advanced features to off and that will display a lot of new features um, and most of them are only necessary for advanced troubleshooting or advanced users um, but that is helpful um, to understand where that's at. Beyond that, um, you should look at the other training videos for specific features but really to get started you just need to set up your own uh, network name and password uh, bookmark the control panel so it's easily accessible in the future um, and then connect to a Wi-Fi source or plug in a USB air card or MiFi to get online so other than that um, that's all there is to it